Hello friends, welcome to Centum Academy. So in this video also we will continue discussing Indian constitution and as you can see on the board um, here we are going to discuss preamble. So uh, if I start with discussing about preamble here, so I'm going to discuss uh, different things here which will constitute of uh, the keywords discussed in the Indian preamble and what is the significance of Indian preamble. These would be the two most important points uh, of discussion uh, while this, in, in this particular video. And uh, <clears throat> then I would also let you know a little bit about how Indian preamble was amended and uh, different uh, orders of Supreme Court on Indian preambles. So let's start with the video. So if I discuss about few general facts, so uh, the first constitution um, which had preamble was American constitution. So US constitution was the first constitution to have preamble. Now, what is a preamble first of all? Preamble is nothing but a preface or introduction. So if we read a book, most of the books comes with a prefix preface which gives an idea about what the book is all about. So it gives the theme of the book. It gives the vision of the book. It gives uh, a, a brief about the book that what we are going to uh, get why after reading the book. So pre preamble of the Indian constitution is actually the same thing. So if you read the Indian constitution, it will give the summary or essence of the constitution. Uh, uh, so preamble is nothing but summary or essence of the Indian constitution. Now how preamble came into picture? So as I discussed in my last video also, uh, preamble is nothing but a modified version of objective resolution uh, which was drafted and moved by uh, our first Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and it was adopted by Constitu uh, Constituents Assembly. So he moved it on as I have discussed 13 December 1946 when the first meeting of the Constituents Assembly was going on and this objective resolution after certain modifications went on to become the Indian preamble and uh, it actually is, is, is the best way to present the essence of Indian constitution. Now as we are discuss discussing preamble of Indian constitution, so let me read that preamble for you. So what has been written in the uh, Indian preamble because uh, if you don't read it, then uh, when I will be discussing keywords, you will not know that where it has been used. So that's why I have included this and I'll read it for you and then I'll let you know that what are the keywords and, and, and in what context they has been used. So that discussion would be fruitful only when we know that where these keywords are used. So it has been written like this. We the people of India have solemnly resolved to constitute India into sovereign, socialist, secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice three kinds of justice social economic political liberty so we have different liberties given thought expression belief faith worship and then equality equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity what kind of fraternity assuring the dignity of individual and unity and integrity of the nation and then comes in our constituents assembly this 26th day of november 14 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution so if i if you look at these words there are several keywords given over here first one is the people of the people of india we the people of india then five words here sovereign socialist secular democratic republic then we are talking about justice liberty equality fraternity and the date has been mentioned over here so why these three red color uh, words over here when everything is written uh, in black why I have used red color here because Indian preamble uh, or preamble of Indian constitution was amended in 1976 with the help of 42nd Consti um, Con uh, constitution amendment act CAA and three words were inserted those were socialist secular and integrity so the three words which were included by this amendment was uh, socialist, secular, and integrity. 
so these these were the three words which were included in 1976 by 42nd constitutional amendment act now before i discuss the importance of the keywords and the context in which it has been used let me discuss uh, another topic which is important and that is the ingredients of the preamble so what does in preamble consists in itself so as i have read the preamble for you uh, and if you look at the gist of the preamble it tells me the source of authority and source of the authority of the indian constitution comes from the very first few words written we the people of india so indian constitution derives its authority from the people of india and that is why the word we the people of india is very important in 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 preamble because complete source of authority of the indian constitution comes from the people of india then what kind of state we are we we are uh, planning to create or we plan to create at that point of time so uh, if you look at the different key words the nature of the state would be sovereign then socialist secular democratic and republic these are the five essence of nature of a state which uh, was planned uh, or on 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 which basis india was um, created i mean these are the five pi uh, pillars you can say in preamble and then objective of the constitution so objective of the constitution can be found out with the different keywords like justice liberty and equality so this gave the objective of the constitution that uh, uh, assuring justice liberty and equality for all its citizens and fraternity also which should be the objective of indian constitution and then the date was given 26 november 1949 now let me move to the uh, meaning of different keywords used in indian preamble so let me start with sovereign what do i mean by uh, by sovereign so sovereign means nothing but india is not dependent on any other country and it's not a domain dominion of any other country so india is an independent country it can take its own decisions no one can enforce us to take a decision on their behalf now the uh, point is india is a member of united nation or india is a member of commonwealth so does it impact our sovereignty absolutely no india is member of united nation or commonwealth or for that matter any other international group on on its own wish and no other country or group or any um, assembly can force us to take decisions in their behalf so india is independent to cede any territory to any particular nation or acquire any territory from anywhere so independent in in decision making is basically the crux of sovereignty now socialist comes from a word socialism and socialism is an econ economic word the kind of economy so uh, socialism is of two type one is communistic uh, socialism and one is uh, democratic so socialism so in india we have democratic socialism and it's nothing but you might have studied in uh, economics that means of production so in democratic socialism uh, means of productions are in hand of government as well as private companies communistic socialism is about abolishing private properties like in russia so most of the means, means of production uh, would be in the hands of the government in communistic socialism in democratic socialism which we have here we have mixed kind of economy where government and private sector both gets involved in in economic activities and the objective is to uh, to uh, end poverty and other miseries of the citizens of that country now secularism so secularism is is uh, of two type one is positive and one is negative we have positive secularism in which government looks at every religion with one eye and and for government no religion is is um, you can say um 
important and other religion is not important for government every religion has equal importance so that is the basic crux crux of secularism uh, mentioned in indian uh, preamble now what why secularism was added in in uh, indian constitution so if you look at the fundamental rights so article 25 to 28 gives a uh, freedom of uh, religious activities to indian citizens but to make it very exclusive uh, or to bring exclusivity in terms of religious uh, freedom the word secularism was added in 1976 by 42nd constitutional amendment act now democratic means we all know of the peop uh, for the people by the people of the people and uh, where uh, the whole authority of the government comes from the people of that citizen so in india we have a fundamental of universal uh, suffrage in which people can uh, people above 18 years of age can vote and choose their representatives so indian uh, 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 type of uh, i mean indian uh, democracy is also known as it representative democracy why representative democracy because we have we can't choose our prime minister directly so we choose our uh, mps or mlas and they are our representatives and, and and on our behalf they choose prime minister or or chief minister of the state so mlas will choose chief minister of state on our behalf mps will choose prime minister of india on our behalf so we have a uh, representative uh, democracy in which we choose our representatives and on our behalf the representatives elected by us choose prime minister or chief minister then india is also republic so democratic uh, countries have two kinds uh, two kinds i mean there are of two kinds so first one is monarchy monarchy is nothing but head of the state is comes from um, a certain family it is it is hereditary in nature so like in britain so head of the state is the queen of britain republic means the head of the state is elected so republic means head of the state is elected now who is head of a state in india so it's not prime minister president is head of the state in india and we do have indirect system of election of president we will be discussing it in one of the slides so our representatives select uh, elected by us both mlas and mps they vote in the elections of president of india so we have indirect form of election of president of india the post is not hereditary in nature and that is why india is considered to be republic because the head of the state is elected 